Hey everybody, what's going on? We are here at People's Park uh, Complex in Chinatown. It's an older part of Singapore. To talk about a more of a vintage inspired lens for the M mount. Of course, I do have it adapted to the Lumix S1R. This is the all new Voigtlander 50 millimeter 1.5 version two multi-coat in the nickel variant. Now, like always, we're not paid or sponsored for this review. Having said that though, I do want to thank Rice Ball Photography for loaning me the lens for a couple weeks to try it out. Having said that, Let's talk about the lens. Now, as we're seeing in the market as of late, there are a lot of companies developing M-mount lenses. Now, Leica doesn't always come out with new lenses all the time. So to keep the interest out there, you've got companies like Seven Artisans, TT Artisans, and Voigtlander has been around for many, many years doing this same thing. And the 50 millimeter 1.5 version 2 is, of course, is an update to the original 51.5, which was a much larger lens, but a fan favorite for a lot of Leica shooters out there. It gave a great look, a very distinctive look that was different from other Leica lenses. And at that 1.5, it is a fast aperture lens, so it's great for low light photography. Or if you really want to just separate your, uh, your subject from the background, this is a great lens for that. Now, the 1.5 version 2 is a smaller variant. It is much smaller than the original but the build quality is fantastic. Voigtlander makes some fantastic lenses. I have the 51 uh, 2 myself, which I will be uh, comparing images versus this one in the Lightroom portion of this review. But when you pick up this lens, especially the nickel variant, it just screams build quality. Everything, the focus ring is smooth to the touch. The aperture has a nice click to it. It's not too much of a click, but it's just a nice click. But overall, this is a very, beautiful lens to hold. Now, the nickel variant also has this black and sort of a uh, silver look to it. It's got this panda vibe, which I like. It looks really good on my Leica MP, which I'll show you here as well. But I have it tested here on the uh, S1R because I can't shoot film and kind of show you the optical quality of this lens and film, obviously due to limitations. So I'm going to try it out with a 47 megapixel camera to see how well this lens resolves. Anyway, besides that, you've got eight elements, seven groups to this. You've got a double-sided spherical element. Uh, the weight of this lens is 255 grams and the filter diameter is 43 millimeters. It's a very small lens. Let me just take it off of the uh, S1R just to show you this. Look how tiny this is. Very compact, very retro, but it just screams build quality. However, there are some issues about this lens, not in terms of the optical quality, but in terms of how it's presented, which I'll we'll talk about towards the end of this review. Anyway, let's walk around Chinatown a little bit. Let's take some images with the 50 millimeter 1.5 variant two in the multi-coat. Come with me. So obviously, you know, when you're pairing a vintage lens up to a, let's say a larger camera like the S1R, it does look a little bit off in a way, but it's got a kind of a cool look to it. If I had an SL2 or an SL2S, I would use that, but unfortunately I don't. So, but the Lumix S1R is a, a fan favorite of mine. I really like this camera and the image quality coming out of it is also really, really nice. But yeah, we're just gonna do around, walk around, see some, take some pictures of people and just this whole vibe here, which is really a sort of a retro vibe. Blanco. How are you? Can I take your photo? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you so much. See? Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. One thing about this lens I have to say is that everything feels high quality, as I mentioned. I mean, the focus ring feels very smooth, but the grooves feel nice as well. But the one thing it took me a while to get used to this lens is because it is so small, I was accidentally, um, adjusting the aperture ring because it has this kind of uh, tab here, whereas the focus ring does not. So it was a little bit like, oh, my focusing, oh, no, I'm stopping down. So it does just take a little bit of an adjustment for that, but once you're used to it, it's fine, but it would've been nice to have a little bit of a focus tab on the, fo on the, on the focus ring versus the aperture. But, you know, it's design lander, something different from Voigtlander. Anyway, come on, let's, let's walk around here a little bit. The lens a lot of people are gonna be looking forward to is the 50 F2, right? That's the lens. You know, Voigtlander announced the Oppo 50 F2, which we will be testing as well. And we might even uh, test it compared to this, but I think for a lot of people out there that want more of that vintage vibe to their images, this lens is gonna be the right thing for you because the 50 Oppo will be a much more modern rendering lens. This does give you a much more, I would say a pre-spherical Sumalux vibe, even though it has a double-sided spherical element inside of it. And so it is sharp and it does have a modern rendering, but when you see the bouquet, you see the background, you see the colors out of this lens, it does look a little bit more vintage, which I appreciate. Because 
You know, as I mentioned in other reviews, sometimes nowadays we're always, uh, all the lenses we're getting nowadays are perfect lenses in a sense. The bouquets are creamy, it's sharp, very minimal chromatic aberration or purple fringing. So when you get a lens like this that has imperfections, it's nice to have because it just adds something to your images. Anyway, let's go this way. But here's the thing I was gonna talk about. This lens is that, you know, nowadays when you got uh, companies like, you know, Seven Artisans and all them that are coming out with like leather pouches in their lenses and hoods and stuff, Voigtlander comes with a very minimal packaging. You get a box, foam inside, and the lens is wrapped in plastic and that's it, you get a lens cap. You don't get any sort of leather pouch or any pouch for that matter, but you don't get any of these things that really would make this lens a little bit much more like special when you get it out of the box. Yeah, of course, you might already have a pouch. You might not even use it, but it's nice to have. And that's something I hope that the Voigtlander does adopt in the near future is when you have a lens that looks like this and it's beautiful, it'd be nice to actually have that. Great to Okay, that was quite cool. Something a little bit different. All right, guys, we're taking a break from that portion of the review here because between the time I was re, uh, reviewing the 1.5 from Voigtlander, Riceball got in touch with me and they said, Bobby, we actually have the 50 Oppo. Would you like to include that in the review? And of course, I'm going to say yes to these things because that's what I do. So here it is, the 50 Oppo. So now in this review, I've got the 50 Oppo, the 51.5, and of course, my very own 51.2, which is my personal lens. So let's um, let's talk about the 50 Oppo for a second because, I mean, this is a lens a lot of people have been very excited about because in the M mount, there's only the Leica Oppo, which of course comes at a very, it's a high price, very premium, okay? Now this lens has a design very similar than the, to the 51.2 that I currently own. Um, instead of this sort of this bulging look that the 51.2 has, because obviously 1.2 can have a little bit more in terms of glass, the 50 is much more slimmer in profile, but it still has that sort of knob, um, that rigid uh, focus ring here, which does remind you of that vintage Leica. It still has that chrome front on the front of it, which I don't like, to be frank with you. I personally like the uh, E-mount variant where it's all black, but that's my personal preference. Um, it does have the Oppo Lanthar uh, logo right here, so that's gonna give you, of course, that this is Voigtlander's Oppo, and everybody knows the Oppo Lanthar from Voigtlander has been well-renowned as a fantastic, sharp lens. So, besides that though, everything feels really good. The aperture feels clicky. Um, it, still is, it still has that great Voigtlander build quality. It's just, it's very similar to the 1.2 to be frank with you. There's really not much difference in terms of the design aspect and of course the build quality. But let's talk about the optical performance on this. Okay. Let's get let's cut down to the chase. I'm gonna do. I'll, by the way, I'll be doing a Lightroom portion to go through images to show you the differences, and I did a comparison with the Leica Oppo. But is it as good as the Leica Oppo? Not quite. Is it close? Very. About ninety-five percent of the performance, which means you probably have to get down to about, or you have to zoom into about four hundred percent to see the difference between this lens and the Leica Oppo. Now, one thing you'll notice, you'll see this in Lightroom in just a bit, is that there will be a little bit of vignetting on the side of it. Now, you can do some lens correction in Lightroom to alleviate this, or you can do your own personal correction. The Leica doesn't show this in Lightroom, so um, this is something you're gonna take note of. So there was no in-camera correction for either of these lenses, so you're getting out of whatever the lens is producing, you're seeing it right away. Uh, but that's pretty much, I gotta tell you, I was really impressed. 95% of the performance coming at around 1100, 1200 Singapore dollars versus I think around 12,000 Singapore dollars. Now, of course, you're not getting that Leica build quality. The Leica Oppo is slightly shorter and smaller, but it's up to you. If you're a Leica fan person and you're like, I need a Leica lens regardless, you're gonna go for the Leica. But if you're open-minded, this Oppo, is phenomenal for the price. Anyway, let's go into Lightroom now. Let's take a look at images from the Leica Oppo 50, this 50 Oppo, the 1.5, and the 1.2.
All right, guys, we're now in Lightroom taking a look at images from the 51.5 Voigtlander. We'll show some images from the 50 Oppo as well as a little bit from the 51.2. But let's talk about the 51.5 first, okay? So um, let's take a look at this image of this gentleman that I took, and we saw this earlier in the review. And uh, this gentleman was very kind enough to, uh, to allow me to take a photo of him. A lot of people are usually not nowadays in this uh, world of smartphone photography and everybody documenting everything on social media, but this gentleman was really cool about it. Um, this, is before edit, this is before edit, here's after edit, before edit and after edit. Again, edits are personal preference. You may like or dislike it, but this is just my feel for the image I wanted to take. Okay, so looking at close up here, it's not 100% sharp. I did use some focus speaking on this. This is a shot at 1.5, just to give you that depth of field in terms of uh, performance. You can see I was focusing right here, and it's detailed enough. Again, at 1.5, 1.2, your image is not always going to be 100% sharp. It's gonna be a little bit softer, but as you stop down, it does improve. But this is more than adequate for me. I'm very happy with this overall. And this is on the uh, 47 megapixel S1R Lumix S1R. So uh, yeah, really, really happy with it. And the lens performs very well. I mean, compared to let's say a Leica Sumalux, I mean, I would give the edge to the Sumalux in terms of sharpness at 1.4. But again, we're looking at a big price difference. And if you're just gonna be, you know, photographing for social media, you're not, you don't need a lens that's going to be clinically sharp. This 1.5 from Voigtlander is no slouch and it's a fantastic lens. Anyway, when we get to sharpness, we'll talk about the Oppo, which is a whole different ballgame altogether. Now let's take a look at this image of this lady that was walking up the stairway here that we also saw me taking a photo of earlier in this review. This is uh, before edit, after edit, before edit, after edit. I just want to give this more of a dramatic black and white feel to this. And I was focusing right here, give it a uh, moment to render, and again, Plenty sharp enough, might have missed a little bit of it since she was moving and I was manually focusing, but this is uh, enough in focus for me to where I have no issues with it at all. Now here's a uh, scenery shot. Again, you're gonna notice this lens is relatively sharp, mind you. I mean, especially if you wanna do any sort of uh, landscape or scenery shots with this, you're gonna see that this works relatively well. All the details here on the side of the frame are pretty sharp. I did stop it down a little bit and yeah, I'm happy with this image. Again, this has been edited before edit and after edit. Let's move on to this statue here. Um, just to kind of show you the texture here and the details. Uh, this is again, the 51.5 at 1.5. Great bokeh, great separation on this. Let me do before edit, after edit, before edit, and after edit, just adjusted some of the colors, turn, tone them down, high, and enhance the red here on her, uh, I believe this is her hat to just showcase that, but yeah, I mean, overall happy with the performance of this lens. So let's look at some more uh, bokeh here because I know a lot of you are into the bokeh in terms of what it looks like and how it renders. Now you are gonna get a little bit of cat's eye here with this, uh, this is a 1.5, and you are gonna get a nice little fall off on this as well. Now, this does not bother me one bit. Let me just show you what it looks like before edit and after edit, okay? So I'm just playing with the colors a little bit here, but I mean, it's nice smooth in the background. It's not too busy. It's got enough character, but again, I'm not like some person that really criticizes Bokeh so much. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's the background and you want to hope that people are focusing on what you have in focus versus the background. If they're focusing on the background and not what you have in focus, that means that your subject, your composition isn't uh, what it should be. Okay. Just throwing that out there. But uh, anyway, just giving you this in terms of reference here. Here's another shot in terms of depth of field and with this uh, lens as well. Before edit and after edit, before edit and after edit. Again, a little bit of the cat's eye in the background here. Um, we wanna look in, yeah, you'll get a little bit of fringing around the lights. Uh, it's not too bad for my taste. Okay, moving on. Let's uh, look at this gentleman here who was uh, smoking and we kinda zoom in on his eyes a little bit. Let the uh, image render a second here in a Lightroom. And we can see the checkerboard here uh, that he was playing with. And you can see his hair is in sh uh, sharp, his fingers, his cigarette is pretty much in, in focus. So no complaints with this at all. This has actually been cropped in quite a bit. Let me show you, this is the before edit and let me show you what the crop in is on this. So just to kind of give you an idea of what I did with the image, just wanted to kind of cut this person out and really focus on these two gentlemen here. Overall, I'm really happy with it again. The uh, lens is sharp enough at 1.5, especially if you're doing street photography, no issues at all with that. Here's another gentleman here. Um, 
he was just, I just like the composition with the railing and where he was sitting at here. And I just thought this was quite interesting here. Now let me just show you the before edit and after edit, before edit and after edit, okay? But uh, this gentleman was by himself here and I just really liked this moment with him. Okay, now let's move on to the comparisons between the Leica and the 50 Oppo Voigtlander, okay? So, here's my friend Ash, this is over at Rice Ball Photography, who was kind enough to be my model of the day, all right? So, here are the two images. I'm not gonna tell you which is which. Let's just zoom in and look at the eyes here. These were shot on a tripod, okay? Everything was exact. I actually uh, put this on a timer, make sure everything was sharp, everything was good, all right? So here we are. And now at first glance, this is very hard to decipher the two images, right? Of course, his head position is a little bit different, but which is which? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is the Voigtlander. This is the Leica. Now, remember earlier in the video, I did talk about a little bit of the vignetting. That's one way you can tell. And also, it seems to me that the Voigtlander is a little bit wider than the Leica. So if all things are considering, if let's say 50 millimeters, of course, that's what they're, they're both touting, you could say the Voigtlander might be a 48 millimeter and the Leica could be 51, 52 millimeter. So yeah, I mean, it's a little bit... Uh, there is a little bit of a difference in between these two. These are both shot on the S1R, both with the keep on adapter on this. So there is no correction in the camera whatsoever, okay? Now I can correct the Voigtlander if I wanna do that. I can just go in here. It does sort of brighten up the edges here. And now if we go back and forth, you're gonna see a little bit of the focal, uh, the focal distance on it, but the vignetting has pretty much gone away. So there you have it. Um, that's one way to look at it. Now let's look at another test here that I have. And I'm gonna show you these images right here. This is of a Leica M3. Now I did shoot this with the uh, Leica 50 Oppo, the Voigtlander 50 Oppo, the um, Voigtlander 51.5, and the 1.2. Now Leica, Voigtlander. Leica, Voigtlander. Now let's zoom in on this, okay? And you're gonna notice, this is a very sharp lens. The 50 Oppo from Leica is probably one of their best 50 lenses on the market. You could say that the SL50 Oppo is a sharper, more refined lens than the M50 Oppo, but you know we're splitting hairs at this point in time. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here on this is that with the Leica, in terms of aberration, you're gonna see a little bit of a difference in just a bit here, but this is all sharp here, and the aberration with the metal right here is well, well controlled on the rewind knob right there, right? Now let's go to the Voigtlander. Again, very, very sharp. Well corrected here. The one difference I can tell between the two of them is the Voigtlander will have a little bit of green fringing here, but you really gotta zoom in to see it, okay? And if I go back here, it's a little bit more controlled ever so slight on the Leica. It's still there a little bit, but as you can tell, a little bit more, maybe a little bit more here. This is splitting hairs here. You gotta look at this side here as well, okay? See, the Leica's got a little bit there, but it's a little bit more well controlled versus the Voigtlander, which is a little bit more pronounced. Notice how far I'm zooming in to see the difference, folks, okay? No one looks at images this way. I'm doing this just to showcase how good this Voigtlander 50 Oppo is for the price point versus the Leica 50 Oppo, okay? Again, <laughs> I'm zoomed in <laughs> extreme amount to show you this because it's absolutely insane. Okay, now let's go to the 1.5 here. And now, of course, you can tell that the bouquet on the background a little bit, a little bit different, of course, on that. We'll zoom in on this. This is all the focus point for everything here. And uh, it's a little softer, of course, at 1.5. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting it to be like an Oppo lens, okay? It's not designed to be an Oppo lens, but at 1.5, this is doing a really good job and I don't think anyone's gonna complain. And this is at the 1.2. 1.2 is going to be very soft, wide open. This is one of the characteristics of the 51.2. But again, as I mentioned earlier in this review, 
Most people are not going to shoot at 1.2 unless you're in low light scenarios. You are going to see instant green fringing. You can see it a little, highlighting a little bit of blooming here. So again, 1.2, not going to compare. But uh, if you need that uh, depth of field, that bokeh, with a 1.2, here you have it. But I got to tell you, as I, I'm really, really happy with this Voigtlander 50 Oppo for the price, for the performance versus the Leica. It's a hard lens to say no to. Anyway, let's show you some other sample images from my friend Danny Tiong, who actually a shot with the 50 Oppo, uh, the Voigtlander version on his Leica SL. These are his images right here. Again, you're gonna see this is a very sharp lens on the SL. This is the original SL, mind you. These are some building shots that he's taken here. You can see how well it's, uh, it's controlled with the metal on this. Look at the detail in the roads here, in the buildings. I've got to tell you, the, the Leica SL, the original Leica SL, is a fantastic lens for image quality. You know, maybe not so great in low light, but daylight, damn. This produces some phenomenal images, even to this day. It's really a good camera. Here's how it handles uh, backlight situations here. All taken by Danny Tiong. So Danny, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to showcase your images here for this test. But very, very happy with uh, the results of this. Look how sharp this lens is, folks. F2. Sharp. Absolutely beautiful. This is me and all my markings on my face. It shows everything. It's an oppo lens. Look at this. Oh boy, I need a facial. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can see this is a very, very sharp lens. You can see the hairs on my head, the beard hairs. Phenomenal. This is a friend KC. Um, look at the fall off from his hair to the background. Again, we're splitting hairs between the Leica 50 Oppo and the Voigtlander 50 Oppo. Anyway, let's go to my final thoughts on these three lenses. All right, guys, there you have it. So in terms of my personal preference, I'm going to say I, ha I own the 51 too. I like that lens. It's a very fast lens, but it is a little soft at 1.2. And to be frank with you, you really don't use 1.2 that much unless you're in really low light situations. But if I'm going to be shooting on a digital camera nowadays, the ISO performance does sort of alleviate that. Um, the 51.5 is a nice lens. It has a nice vintage look to it, kind of a prehispherical 50 Summa Lux vibe to it. But I got to tell you, um, this is my new favorite uh, 50 lens from Voigtlander. It's the 50 Oppo. I really like this lens for the size, the weight, the performance, and the price point. It's really hard to say no to this. Um, you know, because I did mention this previously a long time ago that when I got this lens, you know, I, I sold my Leica Summa Lux for this. Uh, I was going to get a Noct Deluxe, and then I, this was sort of like a temporary lens for me. And I've always sort of uh, dreamed of getting that Summa Lux back. But after using this uh, 50 Oppo, I'm kind of not missing the Summalux as much. I feel like this really will do a lot for me. Now, if I'm shooting on film, of course, a faster aperture lens will make a big difference because it's film. But if I'm shooting digital, I would definitely recommend this lens over the other two. That's just my personal preference, but to each their own. Uh, you got to give credit to Voigtlander where credit's due is that they've done a phenomenal job with their 50 millimeter lenses. And yes, the 35 Oppo will be coming out soon and we will pair this Voigtlander 50 Oppo versus the Voigtlander 35 Oppo. And if I can get a 35 Oppo like in there, we'll throw that in there just for fun. But anyway, those are my thoughts on these 50s. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook. Be safe out there. Like this video. It helps our channel out a lot. Be safe and I'll chat to you soon. Take care.